Hey, what's going on? This is Kex Next, and today I'm going to show you a super cool quick trick uh, that I picked up while on my visual effects adventures. And this tutorial is on something that should be super simple to do. It's just this reflection under my particular layer, right? And you may say, Mr. Kex, wouldn't you just have to pre-comp some layers and uh, invert the scale or flip them along the X or Y axis? And I would look up at you and say, you would think. But really, After Effects doesn't work like that, and I'll tell you why. Particular is a 3D effect, not a 3D layer, so you wouldn't be able to actually invert the scale in 3D space, but it's a 3D uh, effect. So if we go into my main comp over here, um, I have a layer with the 3D camera tracker effect on it and a 3D tracked camera and I have my particles here and I really just wanted some reflections under them. But there's no good way to do this and I'll show you why. So in this comp I have um, a couple different layers. Down here I have some layers with After Effects version of Particular, it's called CC Particle World, and it, it does a pretty okay job. You could use this instead of Particular if you wanted to, but I think Particular has an incredible physics engine and you know you really wouldn't be able to get that anywhere else. So we, we would rather use Particular in the first place, but the thing is with Particle World that Particular does not have is an option to reflect it on the floor. And that's what's actually happening. I've actually duplicated my Particle World layer. So I have a reflection layer down here and I've just applied the reflection option to it. And I can rotate around in 3D space and you can see the particles are still there no matter what. I've just applied some blurs to them to make them look a little bit more fancy uh, and some glows. But you can see that they are still there no matter what. Now, if I was to switch this around and change to particular, and this is my particular layer with its bounce physics on um, right here, I can press play and I have no reflection because I haven't actually added a reflection to it. So after looking around in the particular options for a while, you'd realize that there is no option to get a reflection. So, you know, we can try duplicating this with control D and we can call this reflection. Yeah, and you don't have to do this. I'm just uh, providing an example. If we go to the reflection layer and we go down here to world transform, and this is my first thought, um, just go to X rotation and you typed in 180 so it would flip it um, and then you could just you know adjust this down and you know this looks okay from uh, at first right but let's set these particles to white so you can see them better and set it to a top-down view now you can see that the real particle layer is the colorful one and we have this purple bubble over here and the reflection are the white bubbles and the reflection for this purple bubble should be directly under it, but in reality it's on the opposite side because our effect is not flipped and there's no scale settings in particular, so you can't actually flip this effect. So if you have a you know particle simulation on a 3D camera tracker which is asymmetrical, there's no real way to do this. So let's go ahead and head into a comp where I have particular and a camera already set up. Just for clarity's sake, I want to say that what I'm about to show you should be done in a duplicate comp after you've already finished everything that you have to do with your particular layer. Um, and in the duplicate comp, you shouldn't have your footage layer if you're working with a 3D tracked camera. So in this comp, I have a layer with particular on it and it has some bounce physics going on. Now we have this camera that's moving in an odd pattern around something, but uh, this camera is just supposed to mimic a um, 3D tracked camera. And the number one thing that you want to keep in mind is that this camera is a one node camera and it should be a one node camera at all times when you're using these expressions. A 3D tracked camera is always going to be a one node camera, but you know, I would double check just to make sure. So first thing that we want to do is create a new null object. And this null object we'll call movement. And we want to move our playhead to the beginning of our comp, go to our camera's keyframes, we can click the camera layer and hit U on the keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And we want to select all of the keyframes and hit Control C to copy them and select our movement null. And before we paste them, let's make it a 3D null. Almost forgot that. Um, but paste them with Control V. So now if we went into a different view, we can see that our null object is actually stuck to our camera, or it's not stuck, it's not, it wouldn't move if we moved our camera's position, but with our current keyframes, the null object is tracked perfectly to our camera. So let's go ahead and duplicate that null with Control D, and we'll call this one 
expressions. All right, and we'll move the expressions null below our movement null. Okay, so after we have our expressions null, let's go ahead and delete all of the keyframes from our camera. And we wanna pick whip it to our expressions null. All right, so in our expressions null, we wanna go down to the position and orientation settings, and we wanna type in some expressions. I have some expressions typed up here, and I'll uh, provide them in the description below, but I'm go just going to explain what they do really quick. So in this expression, uh, and it's going to be applied to the position value on our expressions null, it defines uh, posi as our movement null, and it defines floor as our uh, floor layer, which we use for our particular bounce physics. Uh, in position and F position are the world anchor points of our move of our movement or our camera uh, and our uh, floor layer. And then this little expression right here uh, just takes the difference between those two. So it subtracts our null position from our floor position. This for orientation uh, just defines move null as our movement null. Um, and then this down here inverts the X and Z orientation values, but keeps the Y one the same. You can tell by these little subtraction marks right here. Um, so let's go ahead and copy the position one, hit Control C, and we can hit Alt and click on the position stopwatch and hit Control V to paste it. Um, and then we want to do the same thing for orientation. So let's just copy our orientation expression, Control C, and hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch, Control V to paste it. Okay, so now if we play this back, it should be uh, an exact replica of our original video, except it's just inverted, okay? And so you're like, well, what do I do with this? Is this even gonna look good? Well, let's find out. So we wanna take the grid layer and we wanna turn it off. So we just have the particles. So this is just going to be kind of a secondary reflection comp, right? So you have these inverted particles. So let's go into a duplicate comp with the original camera and let's go ahead and drop in our reflection comp. And it was comp two, you can call it your reflection comp or whatever you want. And we can go ahead and drop it below our particular layer. And what we wanna do now is hit S on the keyboard to bring up our scale properties, unlink the two, and change the Y scale to negative 100. And now we have a perfect 3D reflection of our particles. And we can tell if we set our reflection comps color to black and white, and maybe if we blurred them a little bit, and maybe just a fast blur. But you can see that this reflection is exact, because if we zoom in, if we uh, focus in on one of these particles over here, look, you can see right here, this particle that's below it, we can even go to transform, reset, and negative scale. But you can see that this particle right here has an exact copy right below it, and it is completely 3D. And there you have it, a 3D particular reflection. One thing that I do wanna note about these expressions is that you wanna use this technique once you've actually finished completely with your particular uh, with your particular layers in your original comp because the particular layer in the reflection comp is its own individual layer and you'd have to adjust the settings of it every time that you wanted to adjust the settings of your original particular layer. And you could probably fix that with some uh, easy expressions but um, if you just want to keep things simple, just make sure you do it after you've finished compositing your original particular layer. But there you have it. That is my take on 3D particular reflections. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I haven't found much help for something like this on the internet. Um, so I really, really hope that I can help someone out there that was looking to do something similar to what I was doing. Thank you so much for watching. I am Kext Next, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.